Hello folks, this is the video segment for chapter 2 of my textbook and the title of the chapter is a laminated, laminated plate under tension using the manual plate creation. Let me quickly tell you what this is about. So we have a, uh, a plate which is uh, uh, consisting of four plies, a laminated composite consisting of four plies that you see here, uh, 45 minus 45 minus 45 and 45. And this plate is being pulled on both sides uh, with, a, with a distributed force of a thousand pounds per, uh, per inch, okay? <clears throat> now, the length of this, uh, I'm going to assume is four inches, the width is one inch, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, the uh, the, the, the laminate is symmetrically placed about that reference plate, plate uh, that you see here. So uh, uh, the, the thickness of each, uh, the thickness of each ply being 0.05 inch, two on top, which makes it 0.1, and two in the bottom, uh, point, uh, makes it point, another 0.1. So the total laminate thickness here is point, uh, uh, point, uh, Point two, okay. Now the material properties of the laminate are given here, and I'm taking it out of this uh, this lecture notes uh, from somewhere in East Carolina. And uh, the strength properties are also given on the side, okay. Now, if you look at the problem, if you look at the problem that we have, we we are pulling it on both sides, and there's no restraints on it. So, of course, in this particular problem, there are two planes of symmetry that one can use. However, I'm not using that, and therefore I'm modeling the whole thing. And because of that, I have to prevent the rigid body motion of this, and I use the one, two, three rule. The details are in the textbook. Please consult them. So, uh, I will uh, retrace my steps exactly like it's done in the book. And, uh, all right, so let's get this thing going. The first thing I did, I went to my, uh, the first thing I did, I went to the compass on the top left corner and I scrolled down and I got material definition, which, which is one of my favorite application. I mean, if you don't have it here, you have to scroll further down and find material application, okay? But I already did that because I didn't want to waste time on connecting uh, through internet, so there it is, okay? Now we're gonna, I'm gonna create the materials first, okay? So the materials, one way of doing it, this is not the best way, this is not the only way. Uh, here, uh, when you go to that material, uh, material definition, immediately it creates a core material for you. But this is a placeholder, there's nothing in it yet. It's just a dummy material that is created. And you can rename these things to be different things. For example, right-click properties, I'm going to call it, uh, in case I want to track it down later on, Video, video, uh, uh, wait a minute. Video chapter two. Okay, uh, composites, composites. All right, and say apply. Notice that this name changes right away. I'm going to close that now. Uh, put the cursor there, and you, you can say, uh, either you double click on it. You see that you double, uh, that's not what I meant. Uh, uh, you you place the cursor there, right click and you say add domain. That's one way, one way of doing it. Or that's what this thing is. It says add domain. See that add domain? Or you put the cursor there, right click add domain. Either way. So I'm going to use this add domain, and it says well, what is it that I want to add? Well, first I want to add the composites. And you cannot do that uh, uh, simultaneously. I want to do uh, composites and simulation, but I don't believe you can do that uh, together. So I'm, sorry, I'm going to say, okay, uh, composites, say fine. And notice that what happens, it adds a composite branch here, okay? And if you want, you can, well, let, uh, let me add the other one too. So put the cursor, click on this again, add domain on this, and this time simulation. Uh, same uh, same name, okay? So I have these two. 
Now I have to fill in the data. If I double click on this, if I double click on this thing, uh, the, the table associated with that particular uh, uh, composite opens up. The only thing that I need to change here is the cured thickness, which I said is 0 0.05, okay? 0 0.05. Now, these things, although they are important, but for the, for the purpose of this chapter that we're using, uh, they, they're not relevant, okay? Uh, now, the other thing is that here it, it allows you to define the type of the, the, the composite that you're uh, trying to use. A mine is unidirectional, that's the intention, but changing this uh, from bidirectional to unidirectional to something else will have absolutely no bearing on my problem today, okay? Uh, it, it affects your bill of material. If you're trying to get a bill of material, it tells you that, uh, you know, it's unidirectional or bidirectional. The only thing that's important for me is that cute thickness. Okay, you say okay. Now, as far as the material data is concerned, in other words, uh, uh, this information is concerned. Okay, so what I do is I double click on this simulation. I go to structural, abacus multiphysics. I'm not gonna specify density because it's not relevant in this problem, but I go to mechanical go to elasticity and elastic. Now here, you choose the type of material that you want. I want lamina, okay? So you click on the lamina and notice what happens. Immediately, you get uh, 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 boxes for uh, the numbers that you have in that table. So this first one was 20 p million PSI, 20 e to the six. This one, this is a transverse Young's modulus was 1.2, 1 1.2 e to the 6. Poisson ratio was 0 0.25. Uh, G1 was 800,000. Uh, G12 was 800,000 PSI. This one, now this one I think, uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it as half of that, okay? And same thing with down uh, G23, G23, uh, 400,000. I took it half because in the problem that we're doing, this particular, these particular two are not very, very important, and uh, and I didn't find it in that uh, set of lecture notes, uh, so I just uh, uh, took half of uh, half of this value. Okay. Now the other thing is that if you want to input the strength properties, see that strength properties, uh, you have to go to further scroll down, and you go to let me see now where is this thing. Uh, you go to damage and fiber fiber reinforced composites and uh, uh, just just click on it uh, well actually I'm using the uh, uh, say uh, uh, check check on this okay and you can put in the numbers that you want okay so uh, this one this one uh, let me see it was uh, uh, 300,000, 300,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This one, the compressive, uh, compressive longitude and compressive strength is uh, 150,000. However, uh, in this software, if you put a positive 150,000, it will run, but it will come back and give you a warning that this number should have been negative. In some other software, if you put negative, actually it won't run, okay? So here, I'm gonna put minus 150,000, okay? And uh, transverse, uh, let me see now, what are the transverse values? Uh, there is 7,000 and minus 25,000. So this is 7,000, one, two, three, four, minus 24, 5,000. Minus 25,000. And uh, a shear for longitude, uh, for the shear strength is 14,000. This last one, I don't have it, so we just ignore this. And then we say, okay. Uh, one error to edit, so let me see what the error is. Uh, Let's see if we can find out that this could cause a material. What is the error? So uh, let me see what the error may be. 
longitudinal compressive must be greater than zero. Okay, so uh, longitudinal compressive strength in fiber direction must be greater than zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, what I'm going to do is uh, double click on this. Sorry, uh, double click on this. I will change this thing. I will change this thing to fail stress. Okay, and now I'm pretty sure what I told you is going to work. So uh, apparently in hashing the hashing damage, you need to uh, put a positive value. So let's try it. Three hundred thousand. One two three. Minus one fifty. Minus one fifty. One two three. This was seven thousand. And this was minus uh, minus twenty five thousand. See. And this one was fourteen. Yeah, and these last two, I don't have data for it. We just leave it the way it is, see? 14,000, right? And then we say, okay, I should not be getting a, an error message. Right. The other one, I used hashing, but uh, uh, e even in the book, I'm not using hashing. I used the, the, uh, the, the, the stress criteria, and therefore, there was no issue there, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to save this. So we inputted the material data first. Now, in the book, I'm saying that you don't have to do that now. You can actually go and create your geometry and then input your material data later on. And I stand by it. However, to, to be consistent with what's in the book, I did it now. Now we're going to go and create a model. So we go to, go to uh, uh, the compass and generative shape design. <sighs> And this is simply a surface. This is why I can do it in generative shape design. There's no problem. Uh, so you, you select the XY plane and you sketch on it a rectangle that's one inch by four inches. So uh, there, it's the wrong thing, rosette. What I meant is the rectangle right there, right there. And dimension it, this is four inches. And the width is one inch. And we exit. You have to put a surface on this. So I go to the surface tab right there. And there is a fill here. And we say, OK. Notice that you could have, if you want, you could have drawn a line and extruded it. But uh, this is the way I've done it in the book. And I'll do it like that. Now. We need a rosette too. So this rosette is basically an access system that you can place it anywhere and you play you, you place your uh, plies uh, uh, using the X axis uh, as reference orientation. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, it can be anywhere. So if you if you look at the, the, the essentials here, there is the access system there. Automatically, if you don't specify its origin or uh, you know uh, orientation, it put, puts it at the global global origin right there and align with the x y uh, x y z. So uh, this is fine with me. It's just that uh, you know it's, I would have preferred if this was off the off the off the surface. And in that case, I should go and right click uh, uh, create a point, and then it moves my origin. But this is fine for me. I'm just going to uncheck this uh, current. Okay, that, that's all. That means do not use that coordinate system, although it doesn't matter because it's aligned with my global system and it's in the in centered at the global origin. But I'm saying don't use that. Use the global X, Y, Z as any X, Y, Z that I input. Okay, good. Now, uh, pretty much it. This is my part. I have nothing else to do. So, uh, okay. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead to our composite design. There's the composite design uh, workbench. There we are. Okay, notice that the action pad changed all down here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, we have to create a composite parameter. So there is the composite parameter. You click on it. Okay, it says, well, you want to add a material? I'll say yes. Uh, from the live, from the database, you click on it, and notice that because this material tab is still there, 
that stuff that I created at the beginning is sitting right there, okay? I can bring this thing in the front and then select it, okay? If this was not here, then what you can do is you can go there and say, show me all the, my material database, for example. And if I already have created something and I saved it, it's gonna be material database here. I don't have to do that because it's sitting right there. So all I do is I click on this tab and there we are, see that? And I go and select this. Basically, I selected my material, uh, that's it. And as soon as you do that, it goes back here and, and it populates this, uh, uh, this data, okay? The, now remember, the only thing that I changed was this uh, Q thickness, which is 0.05, and I also changed the material uh, directionality, unidirectional, however, as I said, this is not relevant. So click on the rosette, there is no rosette here, you say as a, add a rosette, so I go and select what I created, either from here or from the tree. This is my rosette. And if it's bothering me, I can always hide it. And this number actually controls the size of the rosette. So I can make it bigger. I notice that it says one inch here. For example, if I made this thing 0.5, it's going to become smaller. Sometimes this may not be very convenient. You see that? Uh, we say, okay, fine. Uh, nothing else that I need to do here. The only thing that I need is the orientation, but 45 and minus 45 are among the deep detail, uh, default orientation. If you have an orientation, which is not necessary, you click on it, add direction, and you add plus 30 or minus 30, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm done. Okay. So this takes care of the, the uh, composite parameters. Okay, so I'm going to do this thing by the, the so-called uh, uh, manual ply method, because it's really simple. Okay. But if you have a, a, a part that has many different types of, you know, laminates, different orientation, different even materials, then doing it manually may not be a good idea. So uh, it's very cumbersome. So it says ply group. You click on it. You uh, it says the surface. The default name is ply, ply group one. Surface is that surface, and it gives you a draping direction. So I'm going to drape it in in the vertical direction upward. Okay. If this is not convenient for you, you can you can flip it down, whatever, but this is good. And lock the ply's uh, draping direction to go with this ply group, which is fine. Okay, now, the next thing is notice that the ply's group has been created. Now that we have a ply group, we're going to create our ply, right? It creates a ply manually. When you click on this thing, and uh, you see, you click on you click on this, nothing happens, okay? And you wonder what's going on. That's because it's expecting you to go and select the, the group where you want to put this ply in. And I want to put it in ply group one. Okay, now it opens up. Now, what is the boundary of this uh, ply? Obviously, the ply is covering that entire thing, and the best way is to go and select the sketch. Now, see, it, it picked this thing. Sometimes you may want to get the actual boundary instead of the sketch actual boundary of the surface but in my case it doesn't matter uh, you uh, select the attributes tab notice the material was create was correctly picked okay and the angle the first the, however the first one my first ply uh, is uh, uh, 45 degrees okay so the angle is not correct here I'm going to change this into 45 rosette is correctly picked Say okay, and there is my first ply. There's my first ply, and repeat this thing four times. But I'm gonna do it twice, and then I use the mirror feature in order to reflect it with respect to that plane. So another ply, once again in that ply group, once again the boundary is that sketch one, and the angle is minus 45. And I can do this thing two more times through, but I'm not gonna do it like that. There is an icon here. It's just symmetric ply stacking. You click on it. It says, what is the ply group? Okay, this is the thing that I want to make symmetric, right right there. And non-pivot, non-pivot means that two up and two below, okay? If I say pivot, means that 45 on top, minus 45 in the middle, and 45 at the bottom. So there's gonna be three plies if I do pivot, okay? But no, I wanna do two up and two, two down, okay? So I say non-pivot, you say, okay. Notice that it did create the four plies for me. Now, how do I check this thing? If you go to uh, review, if you go to review here, there is something called the ply exploder, right? Right. Let me move this thing here. Uh, ply exploder, right there. I have one ply group. Okay. 
and I want to see how they, they look. Uh, so I selected that and I say apply. Notice that it gives you 45, minus 45, minus 45, 45. Probably we didn't pay attention to these colors, but for example, 45 was associated with red and minus 45 with, uh, with green. Okay, so that's good. Now we can hide this thing or we can cancel it. It really doesn't matter. I don't need it anymore, so I'm going to cancel it. Okay, good. So this takes care of, uh, of my uh, uh, composite uh, design workbench. So let me save this thing. All right, now we're gonna go to uh, structure model creation. You click on it. Now, uh, don't change any of these. Okay, so we say okay. If you had a part here, if you had a part three dimensional part here, it would go and automatically mesh it for you. But I don't have a three dimensional part, so everything I have to do myself, okay? So notice that the final element model has been created. There are nodes in it and their properties, but they're all blank. There's nothing in these. So uh, I can I can create the, the properties first, or I can do the uh, the uh, the nodes and elements first. Uh, in the book, I've done nodes and elements first, which is obviously not here. If I wanted to do the properties first, uh, I have it right there. You see that? It says here uh, composite cell structure. But to be consistent, just like in the book. So I go and change to measure, okay? And uh, uh, there is your uh, surface quad measure right there. You can see that. I select surface and I'm gonna put the thickness of point, uh, the size 0.125 because this was one inch. If I put the size 0.125 here, there's gonna be eight this way and I don't know, 20, uh, you know, eight this way and uh, uh four divided by that 16 in the in the oh no 32 in this direction in the length direction this is okay and don't worry about any of these other things uh i'm using parabolic so eight noted uh, the eight noted uh, uh uh quad element okay and we don't worry about it if i say mesh it just shows you the mesh here you say okay all right good now, if you don't want to see the mesh, the nodes have the elements has been created here. If you don't want to see this mesh, either you can hide it from here. You can say hide and show. Okay, let me put it back. Or you can right-click um, uh, visualization management, and under the finite element, I want to say hide. These are little things that probably you're familiar with if you have used the three D experience FEA before. Check my other book uh, on essentials of three D. Uh, essentials of finite element analysis in 3D experience. All right, good. Now we're going to do the properties. Now the properties, uh, you cannot do it while you're in the measure. This is the measure. So you go back to model right there. You see that? Put the cursor there, back to model, and you end up with where you were before. Now, on the properties, we have here uh, different type of properties. For example, if you had the continuum shell elements, etc. Uh, then I have to use the right one. But here I have the standard shell, general shell elements, so uh, composite cell, shell section. Okay, you click on it. It says, what is the support? Well, the support is uh, the different ways of doing it. What I suggest that I said in the book, go and, go, go, go and select the, uh, the, the surface mesh quad, quad mesh one here. Okay, okay. There are, there are other ways of doing it. too. And for the composite cell se se section, well, I can select it diff by different ways, uh, but what I'm going to do in the book, I said that let's do it by the uh, by the ply. So it says, well, what, which ply, which group? I mean, there's only one group here. So I select that and notice that it did pick it. Very important. Uh, you see that you 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 uh, go to the advanced, and here it says offsets definition. Now notice that the different choices here. For example, if I say none, if I say none, it's going to place it symmetrically above and below that surface. There's no offset. If I say, for example, uh, bottom surface, what it's going to do, the bottom surface is going to sit on this. 
bottom surface of the ply, and the ply one is going to sit here. But I want to say, <coughs> excuse me, none. Say so, okay. Very good. Notice that uh, this has been created here. Shell section, composite shell section has been created. I'm going to save everything. Okay. Now we're going to go to uh, we're going to go to the structural scenario cre creation. It's a structural problem that you're doing. Let me say okay. All right. Now notice that what happens is that immediately you get this thing in the bottom. Or I mean, default position is in the middle. I moved it away so that I can see it. Uh, with exclamation marks here. That's because these are both missing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the setup. You select your finite element model. There's only one here. You select it. And you say, OK. And this exclamation mark goes away. The reason is that you may have several different meshes, and you may want to use a particular one for this analysis. So it says, which one do you want to use? And in my case, there's only one. But I still had to do it, otherwise this red exclamation mark would have been. Now, the procedure, it says, well, what kind of analysis do you want to do? Static, quasi-static, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I want to do static. You click on it. Notice that immediately this red exclamation mark turned into, uh, uh, turned into uh, a green check mark. Okay. It says, this is a linear problem, linear analysis problem. Okay. And therefore, uh, therefore, uh, uh, it's going to happen in one step. It's not iterative. However, do not include the nonlinear geometric effect. Under advanced, you click on it. Do not include geometric nonlinearity. So uncheck that, and then you say OK. Pretty much it. All right, uh, this, this guy is bothering me, so let me hide that. Right click, uh, hide. Okay, very good. Okay, the, the, I don't need the, ro the the rosette. I can hide it. Okay, I don't need this access system. Anything that I don't need, I can hide. Okay, hide, hide, and hide. Okay, very good. Now uh, we need uh, we need the uh, loads. Okay, let's do the loads. If you look at the force. You want the shell edge load, shell edge load. You click on it. So I want to put 1,000 uh, pound per inch this way, 1,000 pound per inch this way. So ordinarily, you can go and select this, but the problem is that it won't let you pick it. The reason it won't let you pick it is that there are two things sitting on top of that, the ply boundaries and the sketch. So the ply boundaries, it's very easy. You can go there. And just say hide it. Notice that it, it did hide it. That red stuff on the on the boundary is all gone. But I still cannot pick it because that sketch is also sitting there, which is blocking my view right there. So hide this. And now I can go and pick. Okay. First of all, if you put a positive number here by default, it's like pressure. If you put a positive uh, edge load, it's going to compress this. So I want minus... Minus, minus 1,000. And I want this edge, but just to convince you, see, it flipped it so that it, it puts it in tension. You can see that. And I want the other edge. And if you look at it, because the value is still negative, it's tensile on both sides. And we say, OK, this is done. The next thing I want to do is apply restraints, restraints, and at this corner, at this corner, I want to, uh, you know, fix all three movements. So you select it. You have to go and select that corner point. Now you may have a hard time picking it because these these forces are blocking. So let me hide the hide the forces. Now I can select this corner. Okay. 
All right, so I want all three translations to be fixed there. I repeat this thing, this corner point. Uh, no displacement in X, no displacement in Z, but we allow it to shrink the space, Poisson ratio effect. And finally, over here, uh, no displacement in direction Z. This is called the one, two, three rule. It's very common in uh, in uh, finite elements. Okay. The, there is an automatic way of taking care of one, two, three rule, which is called inertia relief. But I don't want to discuss it in this particular uh, video, and I did not do that in the book either. This chapter, at least. Uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, now, if you go to the simulation. Look, uh, I'm assuming that people have some familiarity with uh, doing FEA on 3D experience. If not, please get hold of my other book, which is has nothing to do with composites, but it tells you how to do FEA in 3D experience. Okay. Uh, the, the release 2017 was published, and 2021, which is what we're using now, is uh, should be out uh, in a in a few weeks okay and when i say a few weeks right now it's uh march uh it's march uh, 12 2021 okay all right so the first thing that we're going to do is before i actually run this thing and because i'm dealing with a laminar composite i want to be able to see the stresses in different layers or plies. Ordinarily, that is not given to you, so you have to go ask for it. This is how you get asked for additional additional output. You click on it. It says, well, what do you want? First of all, do you want it for the whole model? The answer is not really. I want it for, for my, uh, for example, meshed part. Okay, meshed part, right there, meshed part. And the meshed part is just the single mesh that I picked. And then uh, is it every increment? Well, this is a linear problem, so increment does not have any really meaning in this case, so just don't worry about it. Uh, and uh, I want to get the stresses. And when you say a stress, it gives you a whole whack of things, but all I want is really the stress component. And if you want to plot uh, some of the failure criteria, such as soy blue, soy hill, et cetera, then you have to go ask for it. This is failure measure, see this? Question is, which one do you want to pick? Uh, in the book, I just I just checked these these three, or these four. However, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, this is the Sai Hill, Sai Wu, maximum strain th uh, failure, and maximum stress failure. These are common ones in, uh, which are discussed in basic books, okay? And now, the question is, where do you want it? Well, I want it, well, first of all, I want it at uh, every layer, by layer, okay? You can you can ask for it by section point. Remember, each shell shell element has uh, this integration point through the thickness, or you can say by layer, uh, I'm on top, bottom, and middle, depending on what you want to look at later on. And that's pretty much it, and you say, okay. If you want to do it by section point, then you have to specify uh, whether you get a sec secondary table here. You have to say which section point, but this is fine. All right, good. So let's uh, click on the uh, uh, the model scenario check. This is a, it's a good idea to do these because sometimes with the trivial mistakes, uh, they're going to pop up here. Okay, so uh, yeah, no mistake at least for this checker. Then I'm going to do the uh, Simulation check. Say so, okay. I have only my basic computer with four cores. Any warnings and errors are going to appear here. As long as they're warning, it's a good idea to proceed with simulation. But if there are errors, in all likelihood, it's going to it's not going to go past that. You have to check what the error is and fix it. Okay. Done. 
And finally, simulation. Say OK. Now here you can uh, display some information if you're doing a problem which is non-linear it's going to do iterations there it's going to for our case it's a simple step it's going to do the one we can also plot the uh, plot and see the uh, the uh, progression of the calculation through uh, through time okay like that Your iteration there's only one iteration and it's going to finish Okay, close it. Now, zero stress, one MISA, zero stress, okay? The problem is that, well, zero stress means that this is the first step when no load was applied. The, in this case, you have to look at two, which is not zero anymore. You can see that's uh, 62, uh, 62, almost 6200 PSI. But this is not very informative. It doesn't tell me where. Okay, uh, so what I'm just going to suggest, first of all, let's look at the deflection, displacement. Aha, that's better. Uh, notice that what happens, if you look at this thing from the top, view from the top, mm, let me see for a second, view from the top, it's the top view. So what happens is that you had a you had a uh, strip of composite material, and you pulled it on both sides. Because this uh, because this uh, lamin uh, stacking sequence is symmetric, and uh, is uh, because it's uh, balanced, okay, and uh, in this case uh, symmetry uh, is uh, not that. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, symmetry, you place the load at the middle surface, and uh, yeah, and, and because it's symmetric, symmetric, it only stretches. There's no shearing effect. These are basic things that they teach you in a comp uh, in a composite course. So laminate, laminate, lam laminate, which is symmetric and balanced when you. When you apply it transversely, it's just going to stretch like a piece of metal, for example. Yeah, so uh, the amount of displacement is given here. And uh, so this is fine. But I want to look at the stresses. Okay, I want to look at the stresses ply by ply. So I go there. I go to the uh, plots tab, tab. Okay, and I'm already there. No problem. You click on the contour plot. And then here you have to select whatever you want to do. Look, I want to see stress components. Okay, and uh, I don't want to see overall. I want to see specific ply. For example, ply number four. And I want to see it at the middle of the ply number four. Remember, plies are sheets, okay? These sheets have the top surface and the bottom surface and the middle surface, okay? So I want to look at the middle surface, About think about it like that. And uh, well, here you can look at the one recess or you can look at other components, other components. You can look at the one recess, or you can look at other components and a whole whack of other things that you can look at. For example, if I look at the shear, shear, it's right there, tensor component, one, two is the shear, and then move this thing on the side, let me move it here, and then say apply, nothing exciting is gonna happen because this particular problem because of the nature of the stacking sequence and the loading, everything is going to be constant. So this is the shear stress in lamina number four at the middle section. In fact, it's constant. Don't expect to get same color in other problems. This was bending. Of course, the colors will be different. And in the other video, uh, in the other chapters, you will do more complicated problems. And when I say complicated, it's not the steps are identical. It's just that. You know, we look at different type of loading, different kind of sequences, etc. Now, the other thing is that if you want to look at, for example, 
so I do uh, failure. Uh, you can do it from here. See that Saibu or Saihil, whatever. You can either do it from here or let me close this thing for a second. You can also go go back there uh, and look at the. Uh, I guess oh oh right here. Uh, well, I guess for failure, you have no choice. You could have seen the different components of stress uh, in this from this one. But let's let's go back there. Let's try it again. Uh, I want Sai Wu. Okay, uh, a particular a particular layer. For example, layer number two, and we look at the middle surface, and then we say apply, and you get 0.192. I want to remind you, as long as this number uh is less than one according to that failure criteria uh, it is safe it's not failing when it reaches one and 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 in this particular problem because of the nature of as i said the fact that the stresses are all constant in different layers it this doesn't change if you go to other layers for example if you go number four nothing changes in general these numbers will change one last thing that i want to do today is to show you something that's very useful. Uh, if you go and click on this, uh, let me let me put this thing in the isometric view, but it doesn't have to. Apply stack plot, apply stack plot. You click on it, nothing is there. But if you click on that, it shows you the layout. So remember, there was a, a 45 minus 45. See here's here's the x-axis, 45 minus 45 minus 45 and 45 but the more important the, the more interesting thing is that down here there is a matrix if you click on it it gives you the same thing but it gives you the so-called abd matrices that are bread and butter of the classical laminate theory all these finite element matrices use abd all these finite element codes use this the, these matrices a this is a this is b and this is d to do the calculations, okay? Uh, because the laminate, the, the laminate is symmetric, uh, the B is zero, but uh, there we are. All right, folks, so uh, good luck. Second one will be, uh, the next video segment, the chapter three, will be available soon.